In Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. Jesus says that when the Son of Man comes in his glory with all his holy angels, then will be gathered before him all nations. And the angels will be sent forth. They'll separate as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. The sheep on the right hand, the goats on the left. Then he'll say to those on his right hand, those are the sheep. Come, ye blessed of my Father, and inherit the joys prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For, here's your explanation. Because. I was hungry and you gave me meat. Thirsty and you gave me drink. Naked and you clothed me. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was sick and you came unto me in prison and you visited me. And then shall they say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and give you meat? Thirsty and give you drink. Naked and clothed you. Stranger and take you in. Sick and in prison and visit you. Now watch what he says. You know, Jesus said, when you did it unto one of these, the least now watch it, of my brethren. I used to preach that passage and talk about the need to do good, do benevolence. And I've heard preachers even in the last few months refer to that passage and talk about the need of being benevolent in a general way to all men. Jesus isn't talking about how we treat everybody in Matthew 25. He's talking about how his brethren treat each other. When you did it unto one of these, the least of my brethren, you did it unto me. Those on the left, same qualifications, but they are rejected, and when they ask why we didn't do all of this, when did we see you and not treat you this way? He said, when you did it not unto one of these, the least of my brethren, you did it not unto me. And I have sometimes illustrated those verses by saying this, Every time we meet at the church at Rome, and it's probably that way somewhat here, though it may not be true tonight, but on our regular meeting time, Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, we make announcements. Now we have PowerPoints, so we have them scrolling, but sometimes we'll get up and supplement that. And we always have a listing of everybody that is sick. Some of those are not members of the church there. Some of them are related, family members of our members, but some of them are members of the church at Rome. And I, you probably do that here. You have them in the bulletin. We have them in our bulletin. And what I have said is, if we got up this Sunday morning and announced, Jesus is at the University Medical Center in Lebanon, room such and such. I know there's some of my brethren at Rome that'd be down there before they went to eat lunch. He is. If I've got a brother or sister down there, he's, that's Jesus down there as far as the judgment scene is concerned. When's the last time you went to the hospital to visit a brother or sister? When's the last time you went to a nursing home to see one of your brethren that's there? Jesus said, when you did it unto one of these, the least of my brethren, you did it unto me. We show our love for the Lord by what we do for each other or what we don't do. I remember distinctly one Sunday morning somebody coming up to me this was before, when I lived in North Alabama came up to me and asked me about one of the members of the congregation there that had been sick and I said they asked me if I'd heard from them lately and I said no I didn't have an opportunity to check on this week and I thought about that later and I had to repent you see I had uh, played 18 holes of golf that week on the Saturday before that I had been in Knoxville at the football game I couldn't honestly say I didn't have an opportunity to check on them I'd used my time to do some other things I wanted to do so I don't say that anymore Somebody says, do you have an update? Or you heard about brothers? I don't say, well, I didn't have time to check on them, especially if I played golf this week or, or sat in front of the television for an hour or two or watched a ball game or read a book. I did have an opportunity. I had time, but I used it for something else. We 
show our love for Jesus by what we do for one another or don't do. But that's in the material realm. Let's talk about the spiritual. In Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, Paul says, Brethren, if any of you be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. As we've already established, I hope tonight, one important element of the law of Christ is loving God and loving one another. Of course, Matthew 22, the first and great commandment is to love God. The second is like unto it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Neighbor there obviously refers to all men. And so whenever a brother or sister is overtaken in a fault, the spiritual in the congregation make an effort to restore that one. What are they doing? They're showing their love for the Lord. By loving that soul and trying to bring that soul back into a right relationship with God. The word restore, as I'm sure you've heard and, and know, carries the idea of, of mending a net or, or setting a broken bone. And if you've ever had a broken bone, you know how painful that can be. And so it's painful, both for the one you're trying to restore and for the one trying to restore them. It can be difficult, uncomfortable. James 5, 19 and 20 says, If you, any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he that converteth the sinner from the error of his way hath saved a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Now, if God showed his love for us and Christ showed his love for us by dying to save us from sin, would it not be true that in saving a soul from death, we are imitating our Father and loving that soul we try to restore, we try to convert? If not, why not? And so we show our love for one another by trying to restore, trying to bring a brother's relationship with God. But I want you to notice something here. We're also showing our love for the church, the body. Corinthians chapter 5, Paul talks about discipline. And I don't know if you've ever thought about it or not, but in that chapter when he talks about discipline, I think we can see that underscoring all of that, underlying all that's going on is love. Now, he says in verse 1 that, it's reported commonly among you that there's uh, fornication, and such fornication is not so much as named among the Gentiles that a man should have his father's wife. So here was a man apparently who was committing fornication with his stepmother. And instead of being appalled at it, Paul said, you are puffed up and have not rather mourned, verse 2. But now watch what he says beginning in verse 3. He said, I... Though absent in the body, but present in the spirit, have already judged concerning this man that had so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you're gathered together, and my spirit, and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch verse 5. To deliver such an one unto Satan. Why? For the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Why would the church at Corinth be told? to withdraw themselves from that brother, to deliver him unto Satan so that his soul would be saved. 